Good evening, everybody. Manirakana na kwa mnuwe saripano. Good evening, everybody. Manirakana na kwa kwa mnuwe saripano. Are you happy tonight? Shwara ripa manirano. If you are happy and you know, let me hear you say amen. Amen. There is no reason not to be happy because Jesus is with us. I just want to ask Pastor Chipunza to have me sing tonight. Just one song before we get into the message. Satani chandi sunga eni asu chesu wali sunungura hama eni apana ume pane pasiwa igona kundi sunungura Satani chandi sunga eni. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, tonight we again give you not only our ears but our hearts also. Mm. One more time, Lord Jesus. Mm. One more time, speak to us tonight. And if adventure we had been passed by, mm. pass us not now, O oh, gentle Savior, but hear our humble cry. Mm. And while you talk to your people, don't forget every organizer and every preacher that is here. Mm. Thank you, Father. Yours is the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 16, chapter 16, verse number 19. Verse 19. Judges chapter 16, verse number 19. 16, verse And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, Akadanamunu, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. 
And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. She said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before. And shake myself, and he did not know that the Lord was departed from him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. The subject tonight is simply entitled Satan's Barbershop. Satan's Barbershop. I think about him and as I think about him I think about you. Samson the strong man. Samson I think about how he was a pillar of strength in his society. How children and other men looked at him and admired and said, when I grow up, I want to be like strong Samson. I think about him. And how women in his society said, I wish my husband was like Samson. Strong man Samson. When Israel was in trouble, the man to call was Samson. When people had a problem, the man to go to was strong man, Samson. I think about him. Samson, the strong man. And as I think about Samson, I think about the strong women in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Strong, not physically, but strong spiritually. People who are seen in society and are admired by those around them. When they are walking in the neighborhood with their Bible and their hymn book, People say there is a strong Christian. When they see you coming back home after Congress, they say, I wish my wife would also be like that woman over there. Strong! Strong man, Samson! I think about him. Samson, Samson, known by everybody for his strength. And right here in this place, there are people here who are popular for being symbols of strength. Strong in music, strong in prayer, strong in Bible study, strong in business, strong in family, strong in education, 
strong Samson's here. Vana Samson waka simba waripan. I think about him. Is not funga pam surpan. But I realize that I am actually thinking about you. Go with me to his wedding day. Samson has found himself a beautiful bride. And there he celebrates with his family and his in-laws and decide to place a wager or a bet over a quiz or a riddle. And as he makes a bet with them, uh, his in-laws find it difficult to get the, the, the riddle correct. And so threatening and asking his new bride, his in-laws threaten his Samson's bride and say, tell us the answer to Samson's riddle. And so she spills the beans and then they tell Samson the answer and Samson loses as his in-laws get the riddle correct. Samson realizes that his new bride has betrayed him. And so angry, he leaves the place in a fit of rage. Samson the strong man. But is he really? He comes back after a while to the bedroom that is his. To a bride that is his. Only to discover that his bride is now the wife of another. For his own parents have given away to his best friend. Samson is heartbroken. He is torn and he is bitter inside. Samson, the strong man, is strong on the outside, but weak on the inside. I think about him, but I think about you. Strong on the outside, but weak on the inside. And even though he is in pain, and even though his heart is broken, everybody knows that Samson is a strong man. So Samson cannot be seen to be crying. Samson cannot be seen to be heartbroken because uh, everybody knows he is a strong man. Samson, strong on the outside, but weak on the inside. I'm talking about Samson, but I'm talking about the Seventh-day Adventists. How you meet them every Sabbath. And with a big smile, they say, Happy Sabbath. And when you look at them, their life is going great. They look very, very strong. But the truth is, deep down inside, if you were to really understand their lives, 
They just look strong on the outside. But on the inside, they have been destroyed. Strong on the outside, but weak on the inside. See them with their nice uniform. You could never imagine the things they have gone through. When you look at them, you would say life is perfect. And so Samson now, those struggling inside, must continue to pretend to be strong. So inside hurting, but looking very strong. Because the people can't see me crying. I'm talking about the mother who is a punch bag at home every day. But she can't tell anybody. She can't cry to anybody. She must look strong all the time. I'm talking about the young ladies who are abused again and again. But there is no one to tell because everybody looks up to them as a big sister. The children look to them as their mothers. And so they suck it up and look brave. Looking strong. Looking strong. But destroyed on the inside. Strong on the outside, weak on the inside. Now follow closely. When the people are in trouble, they go to Samson. But when Samson is in trouble, where will Samson go to? There is nobody to tell for Samson. Where does the pastor go to when he is in trouble? Where does the head of women's ministries go to when she is in trouble? Because everybody looks at her and says she is strong. They go to her for advice and counseling. Strong! On the outside! But nobody to tell about the heartache and pain on the inside. Samson moves around like a boiling kettle, keeping it inside and trying to keep it inside looking strong. And the longer he stays, with no one to tell, he can't tell anyone in Israel. Because when he tells everyone else, Israel is not that strong as, we, uh, as he presents. I can't tell the other ladies. Because then everybody will know that even though I look strong, I am actually weak. And even though the youth admire me, the truth is I am weak on the inside. I think about him. Samson. But I know it's about you. Finally, Samson finds his way out of Israel to the door of a young lady's name whose name was Delilah. Samson was popular. Samson is he was strong and it was easy for him to find any, somebody more beautiful than Delilah in Israel. But Samson goes down to Timna not looking for beauty, no, but he is looking for something more. 
is looking for an outlet. He is looking for somebody to tell. He is looking for somebody to share his burden with. He is looking for a pain killer. He is looking for a way to rest. And so out of Israel, where nobody knows him, he knocks on the door of a prostitute his name is Delilah. And there he finds himself. And the Bible begins to explain that Delilah allowed him to sleep upon her laps. You see, dear friends, Delilah shows us the enemy's tactics. First step for Delilah is to make Samson fall asleep. Because Delilah knows that as long as Samson's eyes are open, she is no match for Samson. Now I know and someone here is saying, well, Pastor, I've never been on Delilah's laps. So I thought I would tell you a few things about Delilah's laps. Delilah's laps are the places that Samson went to find rest when he was in pain. Hello? Hello? Are you listening? It is at Delilah's laps that Samson goes to to find rest when he is in pain. And so tonight, there are things that Christians are doing to feel better in their pain that is far away from God. That is Delilah's laps. Right here, right here, there are people who, when they are stressed, they take one or two sips of the scud right here right here to deal with the pain right here right here some have cigarettes in their tent right there hello are you listening right here to deal with the pain Delilah's laps are anywhere we go to to deal with our pain that is not allowed by God. 
And so, I want you to know also that Delilah's laps were nice. You might be saying, Pastor, how do you know? Well, I'll tell you. Delilah tried to kill Samson three times. Three times. And Samson knew all three times. And yet he stayed on Delilah's lips. Why? Because Delilah's lips felt good. That's why he stayed there. Even though it was killing him. And even though you laugh at Samson. I am not talking about Samson. I'm talking about people. Who know that sin will kill them. But still they stay on Delilah's laps. I'm talking about people. Who know that what they are doing is wrong. But they stay there because it feels good. People who know that this is corruption, but they carry on because it feels good. Samson stayed on Delilah's lips because it felt good. Sin feels good, but it will kill you. Sin feels good, but it will destroy you. I must be honest with you. Most of you here don't even need a picture. Because you know what you're doing wrong already. Better than the preacher does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's anybody who's better at preaching to you, it's you. You know that this will kill you. You know that if you carry on, you will end up in the fires of hell. You know, but you carry on doing it anyway. Like Samson, looking to rest from his pain. On the lips are forbidden Delilah. Delilah's lips were nice. Finally, Samson falls asleep. Delilah calls in for a man. Shave, please, the seven locks of his head. And so uh, the Baba shaves the hair on his head. There was nothing wrong, the spirit of prophecy says. There was no power in Samson's hair. The hair was symbolic of the connection he had with God. Samson's hair was a sign of the agreement Samson had with God. The power was from God. Samson's hair was the connection he had with God. So what the barber cut off was to cut the connection with God. And so when he cut the hair, he was cutting the connections with heaven. And tonight, I want you to know there is a Baba moving around looking for sleeping people so he can cut off the connection. And one by one, if you are not careful, all seven connections will be cut off. The connection of prayer the connection is cut off. The connection of Bible study. 
They don't study the Bible anymore. Slowly, surely, losing the connection of heaven. The connection of midweek prayer meeting. Losing the connection. Now they are losing the connection. Morning devotion. They just wake up and go like they are cows. Losing the connection. They can't be witnessing our channel. To go for Using the connection. Before you know it, uh, one by one, uh, the the one Baba was cutting. Oh, one by one, the connection, connection was gone. Visa, no more connection Apakisina with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No connection, no power. No Connection, no power. Now they can't resist temptation. Delilah woke up Samson. Samson that way. Big Samson. Now being hit by small Delilah. He is now weak. Because there is no connection. Listen to me, my I'm friend. telling you why. You are so weak. Why temptation takes you every time? Easily lying. There is no connection. And when there is no connection, there is no power. Can I deny lying? But when you get tempted, because you have lost the connection of heaven. Wajipa. One by one, the connections with heaven were cut off by the devil. And when Samson woke up, he did not know that he was bored. He said, I will carry on. Hello. I will carry on. Going to the Congress. I will carry on going to church. Everything is normal. I will carry on preaching. Everything is okay. He did not know that it was now powerless. He did not know that there was no more connection. They were bought. Bought. No connection anymore. And so tonight, there are people here who after these many days think that they are still connected. But they don't know that there is no more network. They take Samson and they take out his eyes they tease him and mock him man at one state dinner samson puts his hands on the pillars he stretches out his hands and he prays to God and he says one more time Lord one more time Lord and God uh, when he prayed the connection was restored tonight I want you to know that Samson's hair did grow the connections that have been lost can be regained you can start praying again you can start being faithful again you can start Bible study again you can start being a serious Christian again and one more time Lord Samson prayed and power came down from on high and filled his hand 
hands and he stretched his hand as if like Jesus is master in the future. Hands stretched out like a crop. Samson now dies with hands stretched out. And through his death, he wins the victory. Through his death, he wins the victory. Like Jesus. Through Jesus' death, he conquered the devil. Through Jesus' death, he conquered at the grave. And through Jesus' death, we too can have victory. The connection can be restored. The connection can be restored. It would be sad if you left this place and still not be connected to Jesus. At the end of the day, what really killed Samson? What killed Samson was not because he was full of lust. What killed Samson was the place he went to when he was tired. The place he went to when he had stress. The place he went to when he was heartbroken. The place he went to when he had pain on the inside. What killed Samson was Samson's choice of a resting place. And tonight, dear friend, Jesus invites you and I. He says not to Delilah's door. All he that labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me. Not to Delilah's laps. Come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Don't go to Delilah. Come to Jesus for us. That's where Samson failed. What he did with his problems. That's where many will fail. Where they go to to their with their problems. Where do you go to? Many will fail. By going to Makandiwa. Many will fail. By heading to Magaya. Many will fail. By going to the Nanga. Many will fail. By going to the Apostolic. Jesus says, Come unto me. Come unto me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come to me. And rest a while. And so tonight, dear friend, you can't go home still carrying that burden. You can't go home still with hatred in your heart. You can't go home before you forgive. You can't go home with the pain you have. You can't go home with the heartache you have. What you need to do today is come to the right place for rest. And the best place to rest is at the feet of Jesus. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come unto me. Come rest a while. Strong Samson. Come unto me. And I will give you rest. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as we close the service, there are people here who don't have rest, who need rest. People who can't sleep when they have been going back to the tents, they can't sleep because there is no peace, there is no rest. When they get home, it's more war. There is no rest. And tonight, you are saying, I want to rest in Jesus. 
I have no one to tell. And no one to tell. But I can tell Jesus all of my troubles. He alone understands. I can't bear to bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus all about my troubles. I can't leave this place without the rest that Jesus can give. And so tonight, we want to have a special prayer for those who are saying, I refuse to go home without rest. I'm going to leave my pain and rest in Jesus. I want to rest in Jesus. I'm tired of resting in the wrong things. Some people, when they're stressed, they begin to buy new clothes, new <laughs> shopping streets. <laughs> looking for a way to rest. But true rest <laughs> is in Jesus only. <laughs> and if tonight you want such rest, I want to invite you to come forward. We're going to pray together. Whosoever will. Let him come. How about me, Pastor? I'm an adulterer. Come. Whosoever will. Let him come. How about me, Pastor? Everybody thinks I'm strong. But the truth is deep down. Nobody, nobody knows what I'm going through. And I need rest tonight. And I want to rest in Jesus. I don't want to go to the wrong places with my burdens. I'm tired of telling my friends who just gossip about my problems. Tonight, I want to tell Jesus. Tonight, I want to come rest a while. Because Jesus has promised that we his yoke is easy. His burden is light. I'm tired of telling my boss at work. I'm tired of crying to my children. Now I want to cry to Jesus. Because only in Jesus can I rest. Come, rest a while. How about me, Pastor? I am a liar. Come rest a while. How about me, Pastor? I have so many things I've gotten from the Nanga. Whosoever will, let him come. How about me, Pastor? Right now, nobody knows what I have tied around my waist. Come rest a while before we go tonight. Come rest in Jesus. You can go back to sleep. This is your opportunity. This is your chance to rest freely. Whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, let him come. Come drink the water of life freely. How long shall you go to the wrong places to find false rest? There is no peace there. Only Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. A peace not as the world given. A peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that only God can give. Rest a while. Some people right here are wise to tokoloshis here. Come rest a while. Are you not tired like Samson? Stop going to Delilah. You will die there. Come rest in Jesus. Come rest in Jesus. We're going to pray together. I'm going to ask Pastor to please come pray for us. Oh, no, 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 no,